Chebiwat Sumbewo, Chief of Party International Rescue Committee, or IRC. Thank you for coming and welcome to the JSO interview. Thank you, John. Now, explain what it is exactly that you're doing. I see that you have a project called the Peace Initiative Kenya Project, mm -hmm. PEAK, which is to last 14 months. Tell us more to begin with. Thank you, John. Yes, the Peace Initiative Kenya Project is a 14-month-old project um, funded by United States Agency for International Development, USAID, uh, that is focused on peace building and uh, gender-based violence, working in four regions of this country, Nyanza region, um, Rift Valley, uh, parts of the Nairobi informal settlements, and uh, the coast region. So you're, you're, you're invoking regions for me, which in the post-election violence, 2007-2008, were very much hotbeds. We saw images of, of people being shot in Kisumu town, we saw nasty images coming from Kibera. We saw the coast going up in flames. We saw the Rift Valley with the images of people being burnt while they prayed. Yes. So... Uh, You're right. You're actually right, uh, John. These are actually considered hotspot regions, uh, flashpoints, mm -hmm. where we have uh, traditionally had uh, violence or conflict during the elections. And they're particularly uh, areas of interest, I guess, even for the Kenyan government and all stakeholders, because these are areas that uh, portend the most conflict. Um, and in this particular uh, project, we would like to be able to uh, preempt uh, that violence by ensuring that uh, we mobilize communities through peace messaging, uh, whether through the media or uh, local uh, dialogue meetings where different ethnic communities can sit together and discuss what their issues are and why they should not actually opt for violence, even if they do have misunderstandings and disagreements. Tell um, me what, just tell me one thing. Mm -hmm. when, when you plan ahead like that, are you suggesting that these regions are, are eternally predisposed to conflict? Yes. Nobody else in Kenya, everywhere else, people are nice except people in Nyanza, Coast, and Nairobi Central. Why De them? Definitely not, because um, there are many other parts of this country where we experience violence. For instance... We have uh, violence right now in the Tana River Delta. Yes, and that has actually slowly started uh, brewing, but uh, historically it's not, uh, it's not been as violent as, for instance, the Rift Valley. And also it's the issue around the elections, the concern that these are areas that whenever we have elections, we've looked into the 1992 election, 97, these have shown uh, patterns and uh, historical patterns, and that's why we, we begin to preempt the potential uh, uh, conflict of violence escalating to such a uh, magnitude, which is not to say that other regions uh, don't experience violence. I'll tell you that uh, pastoralist communities in Kenya continue to, uh, to have a steady flow of, 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 of issues that are of concern in this country. But the ones that are um, from a conflict management perspective, the ones that could possibly create a huge rift between the different et ethnic communities in this country are of particular concern. And in this uh, project, Peace Initiative Kenya, we are particularly focused on women uh, because they happen to be one of those groups that have been left out. Uh, when we talk about violence in general around the elections, we talk about ethnic violence, one community against the other community. We rarely really speak about what's happening with women in those particular areas. And with the new constitution, we are particularly concerned with women who are taking up elective positions and how they are being treated. How is the community and the society accepting um, the new constitution with women uh, parliamentarians uh, taking up uh, new positions, we are particularly concerned that they are ma going to be major targets during the elections. So, Mayor, just explain one thing. I mean, there are only two genders to work with in the human race. Yes. This idea that there has to be a, a special dispensation, particularly for women, mm -hmm. I, I don't understand that. I don't see why uh, men are not the targets of abuse in times of conflict and also need yes. to be taken care of. Yes. All society needs to be taken care of, but there are those who are particularly vulnerable um, on a day-to-day -day basis or during specific times of turmoil. So, for instance, you will notice that women and children particularly get more vulnerable when there's uh, general social upheaval. That is why we, we end up targeting them, which is not to say that men 
do not become targets. They are targets. And there are a lot of programs that do specifically target men, ethnic uh, uh, leaders right. yeah. and, 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 and elders uh, among you know, the different ethnic communities who ha happen to be actually almost 100% uh, men right. uh, that target them. But they are th we feel that this is a group that has been left out and therefore that's why we, we specifically target women. So is there, is there a definition of gender-based violence. Yes, yes. It's and this is, is it? violence that is meted against uh, people in society. Because I mean, uh, based on their gender, based on their gender and gender being that. So in other words, I'm beating you up because you're a woman for no other reason. Yes, especially. I just see you. You're a woman. Yes. You need a beating. That's yes. it. Yes, or that. because it's these. There are specific roles assigned to women uh, within society that. Um, for instance, if, if you go back to the elections, there, there are people who believe that women cannot take elective positions because they are women. Women's role is relegated to the home and, and, and service within the community, and it shouldn't be a public uh, uh, role. So this is the concern. So this is when we now talk about uh, gender violence because you are targeting them because they are women and, and, and because of socially assigned roles that are actually discriminatory. So that is the concern we have. Without being unkind, I would suggest that your job could be well taken over by government, the police, the military. Yes. You could have solutions as to say, let women go and vote all on their own in a, in a specific, particular place yes. and, and isolate them so that you can better monitor how they're going to be behaved. The idea of having a huge campaign uh, run by you to get people to meet, you just protect them. If you have a child mm -hmm. and your child is going somewhere where it's going to be unpleasant for them. Mm -hmm. Mom and dad normally sit outside waiting for them to come outside the party. So <laughs> no. why, 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 why the dispensation when you could just deal with them as a group, no. put them in one herded community and go from there? Okay, to go back to your first question, why, you know, just not let the government deal with it? I think it's because the government uh, depends on everybody to participate and get involved. Whether you are a citizen, whether you are somebody uh, from out there who is particularly interested in the issues related to this uh, community, the, so the government actually does uh, need our support um, because the police are not able to find that information. They need the community, to, uh, to, uh, and they depend on the community. The healthcare service providers need the support. You know, within within the healthcare uh, uh, service, you know, the, a woman is brought there and she's she's been raped, and um, all they can do. Is is uh, deal with the immediate medical concerns, but what happens to that woman after she leaves that uh, hospital? There needs to be a psychosocial counselor. We need the church to come in to support that woman to be able to live her life in a, in a uh, healthy way after this. So we do need so, uh, different sectors within government. We, we need different uh, sectors within even our community. We need uh, different uh, uh, groups within the society to be able to, sub to, to, to as, as a mass movement really, to support uh, women and children who are particularly vulnerable. I'd like to ask about the involvement when you said earlier on that this is US. Uh, US equals United States. The politicians mm -hmm. rise up and, and say we do not want to have the uh, participation of foreigners in meddling in our affairs. Mm -hmm. So you have a, a moniker that has everything to do with the United States. Could you explain why the special interest and why the United States in particular of all the countries in the world? Yes, and I must tell you that um, USAID's support towards this is not the only uh, government. Actually, the US government is not the only agency uh, supporting this kind of initiative. There are others. There are very many uh, embassies that are actually particularly interested in, in, in women and children. Uh, but this is, I, I must say that this is particularly uh, a concern uh, to the U.S. government because women, uh, peace and security forms part of, of, of the, uh, the agenda of the Obama, Obama government in ensuring that there is uh, protection and, and security for women at, on a day-to-day -day basis, but especially during the elections because there is a consideration that uh, the vulnerability of women during these periods uh, is, is, is a major concern and is one of those gaping holes that has not uh, been looked into. So, so are the people on the ground, mm -hmm. are they Kenyans working for Kenyans with aid money or are indeed outsiders coming to 
inform you as how best to deal with the situation? No, the, I, I am the head, I am the chief of party, right. and I am a Kenyan citizen, and right. all the other staff are Kenyan citizens. All the committees, all the platforms that we depend on, all the people that we interact with are all Kenyans. So it's not, um, it's not a foreign agenda, it is a Kenyan agenda in which we as, um, as, as Kenyans solicited uh, assistance from them. And uh, let me uh, inform you also that this is in partnership with the Kenyan government. The Ministry of Gender, uh, for instance, is involved in this. Uh, the UNIS uh, UNICEF uh, is involved in this and uh, several other UN agencies. So which my are question was more about logistics. Mm -hmm. The idea, you know, you're a coach of a football team or something and you're planning, I don't know, to win some cup. You have, you have a strategy. Mm -hmm. Is it your expertise? Is it your knowledge, Mr. Bewo, which, mm -hmm. which is, which is um, allowing this to happen? Yes, it is. I am um, a career peace builder, right. which means that I've worked for um, over 20 years in the peace building field um, in nonviolence action. Um, so definitely I am using my knowledge and experience and expertise in working in this country and in the entire region, the Horn of Africa region, on how we, we, we mobilize and engage uh, communities for transformation. So it is a Kenyan agenda. It is an agenda uh, of, of the people of, uh, of this country, uh, people with expertise, people with interest in this country. Let me press you somewhat further. Yes. What are the strategies which you will employ? Mm -hmm. what, what are the sorts of things that you're doing? Mm -hmm. Concrete actions on the ground that you will... Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, one of the things we are doing right now is we are supporting um, a helpline, um, 1195, which is a hotline to uh, uh, be able to respond to SGBV cases or gender-based violence cases. Uh, this is a hotline that uh, you call into and uh, you're, you're supported by being referred to a hospital uh, or a police center. Um, and that's one of them. The other thing we do is we are doing uh, mass scale uh, training or awareness raising on gender-based violence. One of the things we notice within the community is that people tend to think this is a private matter. So, you know, what I do with my wife or my children is, 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 is personal to me, but I, I don't think that that's what it is. So we, we raise awareness on what's really happening within communities and families. We raise awareness also on the vulnerability of people uh, during the election period uh, when there's this potential for turmoil. We also are broadcasting uh, messages in uh, radio shows um, saying, you know, the, uh, with ve very interesting skits on um, the different issues uh, facing uh, uh, communities, if it is FGM, if it is um, uh, violence during the elections, uh, 